And then Saints <clears throat> wanted to talk about, uh, ask the question or talk about uh, is where are the men today? What happened to men in this nation? What happened to uh, men being men? Uh, we live in a nation that has become effeminate. Uh, men who are supposed to be masculine have become effeminate in a lot of different ways. Children, because of that, uh, follow in that way and they become effeminate in how they are and how they act and how they talk. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because <clears throat> In my Bible reading, I came across, I've been in the, uh, the, you could call them minor prophets. I don't believe they're minor, minor, anything minor about prophets in the Bible. Uh, they had a specific job to do, but that's aside. But <clears throat> I've been in the prophets in the book of Nahum and Nahum 3 and verse 13. Uh, when I came across this verse, I thought about uh, other scriptures like it that I'd seen in Jeremiah uh, that talked about this. And of course, you know, once one scripture comes forth and speaks to you or reveals a truth to you that maybe you see in uh, your own time period like this prophet did uh, or prophesied about in the future uh, you start to think about other scriptures <laughs> if you're a spiritual man of course and so this is the verse name 3 and verse 13 Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. So, the people in the midst of thee are women. And I mean, isn't, isn't that a truth? That's a truth of the day. Um, you've got women uh, walking around, I've seen, that are more buff than men. I've seen uh, men that have become women. They're not, uh, they may not be uh, necessarily a homo, but they're effeminate at best. They're weak-willed. Uh, there's a lot of different things in how the men have become women. A lot of men uh, have resorted to uh, office work, for instance, they don't want to work by the sweat of their brow so they've resorted to office work and men who will go out and work by the sweat of their brow come over from other countries and they take those jobs uh, that the men of this so-called men of this country won't work uh, because we live in a society today of men who have become women. And that's the truth of the matter. 
like what I'm saying, agree with what I'm saying, disagree with what I'm saying. If you're a born again Christian, you should be uh, seeing these things. When you preach, you know, when you preach the gospel in a lot of different areas, you, you will see that the men have become women. Their women rule over them. Why? Because they're women at heart. They're effeminate at best. Effeminate at best. You preach the gospel, who gives you more flack? Who's the one running their mouth against you? Is it the men? Normally it's not. It's the women. Why? Because the men have become women. The men have become women. And we sit around and we think we think as a nation that we're invincible. We think a lot, I mean I'm, some people that have watched this video don't think that we're invincible. And I'm here to tell you that you shouldn't be thinking that your nation's invincible. You shouldn't be thinking that your nation's almighty and strong. Because on my way out of the military in 2012, I saw this thing happening where the military was getting softer. It was getting softer from 2008 to 2011. In 2012, it was just softer and softer. So here we are. 10, 11 years later, and what, what it's like now, I'm not there, so I don't know. But I can imagine that the expectations for soldiers and Marines and sailors, all of their standard, their bar is lowered. Women can be in infantry now. There's just a plethora of things that I could talk about and topics I could talk about. But I'm just focusing on the one simple fact that men in this nation have become like women. They're effeminate. They have an effeminate spirit about them. They're soft, they're weak-willed, they're offended at everything. Christians even are like this. take offense to every little thing you know it it's it's amazing it's amazing how uh how far gone we are as a people and like i said you can see these things by just going out and preaching the gospel being a witness in your community uh going to these cities and preaching and seeing it you know, these effeminate men, these men that have become women. Jeremiah 50 and verse 37 mentioned it too. So there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. Just another scripture. All right. That talks about this. Jeremiah 50 and verse 37. A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her. They shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters. They shall be dried up. For it is the land of graven images and they are mad upon their idols. Sounds a little familiar. Uh, they're mad upon... I wasn't even planning on reading verse 38. Uh, but I'm glad I did because uh, they are mad upon their idols. Isn't that's, that's just like today. Now this is talking about the sword coming through Babylon uh, and the men becoming his women. But then there's another verse in chapter 51 that confirms that their military might or their military personnel, their mighty men became as women. 
So they're going to be as women when the sword comes through. And their military, uh, it's, it's not ready to fight because there is women. But that's what we have before us today. A nation full of women, a church, church is full of women, men who are, are like women. You know, that's that's where we're at in society today. Uh, we have an effeminate spirit in the land. We have many spirits in the land, but that's one of them. An effeminate spirit. An effeminate spirit that hates judgment. An effeminate spirit that hates any type of... Uh, uh, <laughs> any type of truth. An effeminate spirit that uh, hates to work, will not work, will not labor, will not sweat by its brow. An effeminate spirit that lets their women rule them, their little Jezebel women rule over them. Uh, that's what we have, a nation full of Jezebels and Ahabs. You know, it's just like I have written down here in Isaiah 3. I've said this many a times to brethren before. I've given this scripture, but this is prevalent to what we're taught, what I'm talking about here. Uh, where are the men at? Where are they at? Uh, they're castrated. They're castrated. You know, there's a lot of talk. A lot, you hear a lot of talk come from them. You know, you, you see a lot of talk come from them when we're preaching on the street and stuff but what happens it's always the woman it's always the woman uh, because Ahab uh, Ahab takes orders Ahab uh, the woman over Ahab wears the pants that's what we have before us today this is just a simple truth so many people are going to watch this video. Yeah, I already know what you're talking about. I already know this stuff. There's nothing. You're not bringing any enlightenment. Well, somebody's going to come across this video and they're going to realize it. But it says in Isaiah 3 and verse 8, For Jerusalem is ruined, Judah has fallen because, uh, because of their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance does witness against them. They declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. But woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, verse 12, all, as for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to error and destroy the ways of thy paths. You hear that? Children rule over them. We see that today. We see that today with children. We see that children are being killed in the womb, but we see that the children that aren't being killed in the womb, they rule over their parents. They rule over their parents and the women rule over the marriage. This is what we see. This is what we see, this is what we're seeing today. We're seeing that men are weak-willed, they're cowardice, they're castrated, just castrated men everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. You don't believe that? Go preach the gospel. You don't believe that? Go start testifying against wickedness on a street corner. You don't believe that? Go to your nearest city, your nearest major city, and start preaching the gospel there, and you'll see it. You'll see it. You know, like it says... Uh, later on in that same chapter, moreover, the Lord said, in verse 16 in Isaiah 3, moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty 
and walk with stretched forth neck and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a tinkling with their feet. But that's the point. Uh, they're haughty women. Women are haughty. Women are more bold than men today. Women are more bold than men today to open their mouth and speak. And that could even be compared in Christianity. I know a lot of bold women. I know a lot of bold women that are more bold than men. And it should not be so. It should not be so. But it is. I praise God for them. But I think about the men and I think, what the heck's wrong with you? Are you what's wrong with you? Why is this woman more bold than you are? It should not be so, men. Christian men should not be so. But it is. It's true. It's true. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, you get right with God. You get saved. And, uh... This stuff is elevated times 10. This stuff, I already saw it when I was lost, man. When I was lost, I saw it. I saw the society like this. <clears throat> but now that I got right with God and I'm saved and born again, it's magnified times 10. That it's just a sad state that we're in. And it's not going to get any better. You know, it's, it's not going to get any better. As far as this nation goes, it's a sinking ship. It's a sinking ship. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. And in perilous times, it's not going to take coward men. It's not going to take weak-willed men. It's not going to take little castrated sissy men. It's going to take men. Men of God who are bold and filled with the Holy Ghost to speak against the wickedness of this world. That even that effeminate spirit runs in Christianity today. Runs in Christianity today. It's it's a sad situation. It's a sad state of affairs in this hour. But, you know, when I think about seeing some of these verses, I didn't read the other Jeremiah verse that I had out of 5130. I quoted it, but I want to read it. It says, The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. So again, talking about men becoming women and an attack from the enemy coming upon a nation. Upon a nation as wicked as this one. In America. As wicked as this one. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Uh, there's no blessing with bloodshed uh, upon this land. No, the curse of the Lord's in the house of the wicked. Yes, yeah, some good things have happened. God, God has allowed some things to happen, uh, but ultimately, abortion's not abolished. It's not abolished. Therefore, the curse of the Lord is still upon this land because we won't humble ourselves and repent. And you got things like Asbury uh, revival happening. Okay, well, why, why is it when these revivals happen, why isn't it that people after they repent and get right with God and they get revived, how come uh, it doesn't go past the four walls of the church? How come it never outpours into the streets? How come it never goes into the streets? We see these revivals, so-called, like this one. How, how come it hasn't gone out into the highways and hedges 
and started calling people to repent because that's exactly what happened after I got saved. That's what happened exactly after I got right with God. Men are, where are the men at? Where are they at? Where are they at now? I can say the same thing in Christianity to Christianity. I'm just talking about the nation of America and how men have become like women. And that's part of the downfall. That's part of the judgment of God. That's part of the judgment of God. But I could talk about Christian men too, uh, who, I mean, you're no different. You won't, you won't lift a finger for the kingdom of God. You won't open your mouth and judge righteously for the kingdom of God. You won't stand and oppose wickedness for the kingdom of God. Uh, you're no different. You, become, you got an effeminate spirit. A feminine spirit. Refuse to stand against wickedness. Weak will, soft. Soft. Like a teddy bear. Like a teddy bear. Soft. A lot of people can't go and oppose sin because they still got their foot in the world. They still got one foot in this world. They want to have a bunch of things that are not expedient to their walk with God. And that's why they can't go and preach hard against sin. That's why they can't go and, and rebuke the wicked. They ain't got their things in order. Man. I hope you pe I hope you see what I'm talking about. I hope you see what I'm talking about. I hope you see it cuz it's 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 a steady stream of downflow straight off a cliff. That's what it is. And uh you know with uh tensions uh of the war drums again going off and people thinking that uh, we're going to go head, full steam ahead into another war and we're going to prevail and we're going to be all mighty and strong. Ain't going to be mighty and strong with a bunch of women. With a bunch of women. It's not going to happen, guys. People need to wake up out of their sleep. You know, that same book of Jeremiah talks about them being in a perpetual state of sleep. Our Christians in a perpetual state of sleep in this hour. Waiting for your rapture. That rapture is going to come. I just know it. I just know that rapture is going to come. You care more about the rapture than you do about your neighbor perishing. You care more about the stupid rapture than you do about going out and serving God. You care more about escaping tribulation and escaping hardship and escaping the suffering that the Bible talks you will as a Christian, you care more about that than you do about actually going and serving the living God. You care more about gathering on Sunday and putting on your little play, putting on your little church service than you do about serving the living God. Sleeping, sleeping. You sleep and the enemy, just like it says, they, they, when men slept, the enemy came in. That's this nation in a perpetual state of sleep because we have no need of anything. We have everything we need. But the second God takes it away, man, these men who are like women will not know what to do. These men who are like women, big trouble, big trouble. If you're a man, be a man. If you're a man, get some skin about you. Get get some get some skin about you and be a man. Pull up your pants and be a man. Pull up, gird up your loins, gird up your loins and be a man. If you're a Christian, gird up your loins and be a man. Stop being a weak-willed, castrated, sissy, effeminate, spirited coward. God doesn't need that, and God won't use that. God needs men. That's what he needs. He doesn't, 
He doesn't use men who are like women. He doesn't use that. So we need to wake up. We need to realize the time we're in. We need to realize we're not as invincible as a country we think we are. When we got a bunch of homos walking around and homo approvers and transgenders in the military and all this other wicked trash that we allow in this nation. This nation is in peril. Like, like the Bible says, I believe what the Bible says, perilous times shall come. That's what it says. That's given. That's guaranteed. And so perilous times are coming to America. To America. Not revival. Everybody wants to have that. They want peace, peace. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. Surely no evil shall come upon us. We're not repentant of our baby murder. We're not repentant of our sodomy. We're not repentant of any of it. We're not repentant of all of our uh, poison distribution centers called liquor, liquor stores. We're not repentant with all the pot shops we allow now in every city. Uh, we're not repentant. We're going further and further and further away from God. And this is just one sign of that, that the men are like women, like women. I can go on for a long time about it all. But that's the main point I want to touch on. Where are the men at? Where are the men at? Where are the men of God at? Where are the men of God at? Where are the men of God at? Where's the sense of urgency? Where's the sense of urgency? Where's the fight? Where's the fight in you? The Bible says contend for the faith. They, they that keep the law, such as keep the law, contend with them. Where's the fight in you? Where's the fight in you at? Do you have any fight in you? Or do you just, you just talk about what you'll do? You talk about the things that you're going to do for God, but you never actually do anything. Perilous times. That's what it says. It says perilous times shall come. Wrong judgment. You know what we get? We get wrong judgment. That's what proceeds forth is wrong judgment. You want that we want people, we want to hide. We want to hide uh, these truths. We don't want people to come and judge in the gate. We don't want them to rebuke in the gate. We don't want them. Uh, we don't want people to, to preach against sin. We don't want to talk. We don't want. We don't want to talk about this thing. This place called hell. Christians don't want to preach about hell, fire. They want to try to avoid that like the plague. They want to talk about what the devil wants to do. You need to talk about what God's going to do. You need to talk about what the holy God's going to do, what God's judgment will be. That a holy God uh, will kill sinners and put them in hell. That he kills, that he makes alive, that he wounds, that he heals. That's what we have today. People don't want to speak. These truths uh, for fear of offense, fear of offending everybody. God calls these people a walking offense. And uh, what about what God thinks? You know, Habakkuk, that was the book in chapter 1 and verse 4. Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. The wicked doth encompass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. And what's that wrong judgment? They call things that are evil good and good evil. But that's because the law is slack. The law is not preached. The law needs to be preached. Judgment needs to be preached. And then the remedy, which is repentance, which is repentance. 
It's not believe and repent. It's repent and believe. That is what uh, Jesus Christ said. That's what John said. And Jesus Christ said to preach repentance for the remission of sins in his name. And remission of sins in his name unto all nations beginning at Jerusalem. The law slacked. Why? Because everybody said, well, we're under grace. We're under grace. We're under grace. We're under grace. You're under grace if you're born again. You're under grace if you're truly born again. Uh, but those who are under the law, they have a problem with the law preached. That's why they have a problem with it because they're under it. They're under condemnation. And see, if you're not under condemnation, then you shouldn't get offended when a Christian's out there rebuking sin and and uh, preaching the law of God and preaching the moral law of God, it shouldn't offend you. You're truly saved because you're not under condemnation. But the ones who get offended, they, uh, they're under condemnation. Woe unto this nation. Woe unto this nation. It should, it should stir you to want to preach even more. It should stir you to want to go serve God even more. It should cause you to do something. It should cause you to want to testify and preach this word right here. It should cause you to want to do those things. It should cause you to want to do those things. But a lot of pastors today, a lot of... A lot of so-called churches today, they don't do those things. They don't do those things. Because they're a lot like other people that I'm talking about. They became like women. It's what they became. Uh, no backbone, no boldness, no fire. Uh, why, why is that? Why is that? Well, when you're around it all the time like Lot was, I guess... He was vexed, right? That's, you know, you hear people say, well, I'm vexed, I'm vexed, I'm vexed. Even the more so why you should have an intent and purpose to go forth inspired of God to preach this word of God and call sinners to repent and to rebuke them in their sin and urge them to repent before they perish, before they die, before they go to hell, before they suffer hell fire forever. Just wanted to bring that truth out, said some things, uh, didn't really uh, know exactly uh, where I was going to go with it, it, you know, didn't know every point I was going to touch on, but that was the main point was where are the men at today? Uh, because when I look around, when I go preach the gospel, I see just a bunch of women. That's what I see. I don't see a lot of men. I see a lot of women. Uh, I see a lot of uh what look like men, but they're actually women inside, effeminate at best. And, uh, and that's what we have going on. We have an effeminate spirit in the land and it needs to be combated with bold men who are as bold as a lion to speak boldly and call a spade a spade. That's what it needs. It doesn't need cotton, cotton candy, care bear. Jesus loves you. Uh, you know, uh, and, and do you need a bottle of water and a hug? It doesn't need that. It needs uh, it needs fire and brimstone. It needs judgment. It needs the law of God. And it needs to be called to repentance. That's what it needs. So, uh, whether you agree, whether you disagree, there's something. one thing you can't get around is uh, the men in this nation have become like women. They've become like women. And ultimately, it's going to lead to the downfall of this nation if the Lord tarry. Because he said in Malachi chapter number three, he said, I am the Lord and I change not. <laughs> 